untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a 4-color elemental deck featuring some busted cards like Omnath, Locus of Creation, and then of course we're playing Risen Reef as one of the elemental payoffs, letting us put a card from our library into play if it's a land, authorized into our hand whenever Risen Reef or another elemental enters the battlefield under our control. So this is one of the main card draw engines in the deck. Then we've got some early ramp, thanks to Lotus Cobra with landfall, and we can play many lands in the same turn, so Cobra is awesome here. And Gross Spiral, another nice way to ramp early, putting additional lands in play. Then we've got two copies of Dryad to potentially fix our mana in a four-color deck. Also great with cards like Fabled Passage, so we can tap our Fabled Passage for mana without needing to necessarily sacrifice it. And also in general lets us play an extra land, which is great for landfall and cards like Omnath, which requires us to play multiple lands to get the full benefit of gaining four life, making four mana, and dealing four damage to each opponent and each Planeswalker we don't control draws a card when it enters, so a great card if we can cast it. We also have one copy of Omnath, a Locus of the Royal, which is sometimes even better than a Locus of Creation if we get it going, and can also distribute plus one plus one counters on our elementals whenever we play a land. And then one copy of Yasharn to potentially fetch up our Plains and Forest, and also an elemental, so has plenty of synergy, can also shut down sacrifice synergies from opposing decks. And then topping off our curve, the full set of Genesis Ultimatum, and this card is the real curve topper we're hoping for most of the time, as it can put a ton of permanence in play, very few of our cards are actually instants or sorceries, and we can always just hit another Ultimatum and get it in our hand. And then with all the landfall triggers from Lotus Cobra, from Omnath, we can often cast a bunch of spells after Ultimatum to keep going. We can also get lucky and put an Ugin in play, as a nice board wipe that can take over the game. And then Titan of Industry, a nice addition from Streets of New Capenna also happens to be an elemental, can stabilize us by gaining 5 life, destroying an artifact or enchantment, can make a 4 4 Rhino Warrior token, or even put a shield counter on one of our creatures, useful against sweeper effects. And then the mana base has a whopping 30 lands, which is a lot, but our deck is very mana hungry. We want to put extra lands in play with Growth Spiral and Risen Reef, so it's important to have a high land count. We've got the help of our two tri lands here to fix our mana which can be a little awkward at times if you're putting them in play tapped and you need an untapped land, but the mana fixing is essential and in the late game we can still cycle them at least. Then Fabled Passage, awesome, alongside our Lotus Cobra and Omnath, and we've got plenty of basics to search up, including a Plains which we can also grab with Yasharn, although for the most part we want to avoid having a single Plains in play, as that doesn't help us cast a Genesis Ultimatum. And then we've got Breeding Pool as a nice dual land, and a few pathways to help out. Important to note about the pathways is that you cannot put the backside of them in play with a gross spiral, so you do have to be a little bit careful there. But yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, our hand's a little bit heavy on 7 mana cards, so can I still keep? I'm really hoping for a string of lands in a row, but the combo of Spiral plus Cobra could certainly help us ramp into them. I think it's still a little too sketchy with 3-7 drops. Alright, this is better. And then I don't think we need Dryads, as we'll be able to play out all our lands pretty quickly. Opponent on an Angel Life Gain deck. So it's all about getting our ramp engines online as soon as possible. Don't expect much removal from the opponent. Okay, and then I guess we'll play the forest for now. Sometimes you actually want to keep the basics in hand if you have a growth spiral, because growth spiral will only put the front side of pathways in play and not the back. So that can sometimes mess up your mana for something like ultimatum. Opponent is thinking here, maybe they do have an instant speed removal spell. Maybe a march, they're deciding what to exile to get rid of Lotus Cobra. Alright, never mind. There's Inspiring Overseer. At one toughness we can easily kill it with an Omnath next turn, if we'd like. Although it could benefit us to play Risen Reef first. We might want to get the extra card advantage from Risen Reef going first. So let's try that. 
This can be blue. Alright, found another Risen Reef. So next turn we could maybe combo off. One of our better draws would be a fetch land, Fabled Passage, as our opponent main phases company in the hopes of maybe gaining a life to activate Speaker. Which also could have been taken out by Omnath. Opponent has a few different options, it seems. And those are pretty good. Valkyrie plus Resplendent Angel. At least not enough to get to 27. And there's a Gross Spiral. Okay, so... I think the highest upside here is just going for another Risen Reef. Probably want to not play this on whites. So we'll play it on green. Can name blue. Play Risen Reef and then hope to hit a land at least. So we can keep going. This will name red. And uh, fetch land is perfect. Okay. This some blue. And then we can play Omnath with three elementals in play. And then we can take out Resplendent Angel. And then we can add counters to our creatures as well. Plenty of lands in play, so next turn we can ultimatum. Okay. Play another Cobra. And attack for four. So now we're less worried about our opponents getting to 27, although another company could easily do it. And then I'm gonna hope this ultimatum finds something spicy. An Ugin is probably hard to beat for the Angel deck. With our sequencing last turn, it's also possible we could have not played the land before playing Risen Reef in case we revealed Fabled Passage. We could have put the Fabled Passage in hand to get an extra landfall trigger that way. So something worth considering. So Lunark Veteran, if they have a Fort Toughness Angel, they could maybe get to 27, but just an attack for four. Fable Passage, awesome draw, but might as well ultimatum first. And then we'll have another Fable Passage that we can activate. Maybe putting more copies of Lotus Cobra in play first. Although the other argument is that we can thin out our deck and get some more basics out of our deck first. Should be able to cast another ultimatum pretty easily. And some more counters. Gonna draw a ton of Risen Reef. Make a lot of mana with triple Lotus Cobra now. Still haven't played the land for the turn. So should easily be able to cast everything that we draw here. Just have to watch out that we don't end up decking ourselves. Okay, so what's next? We have 30 cards remaining, so not a concern. I guess we can ultimate them again. And this is also a matchup where the reach from Titan comes in handy. triggers and then add more counters to our elementals that can actually attack. More Risen Reef triggers. Yeah, this is pretty ridiculous. I guess Omnath can put counters on himself. 
And there's Ugin, which can clean up here. I admire our opponent's patience. Imagine playing this in paper and having to keep track of all these triggers. One of the advantages of Magic Arena, for sure. 15 cards left. Alright, so we have to be a little careful now with our additional copies of Ultimatum. So we might want to close out the game here. Alright, so we have a little bit of mana to work with. And uh, how about an Ugin the Spirit Dragon? If I play Titan, we trigger Risen Reef a bunch. Not sure what to do with Ugin. We could minus three. We could just plus clear a blocker. And we might be able to kill our opponent with combat damage as well. If I play a backup Omnath, we draw. I guess we have to be a little bit mindful here. Maybe play another Titan. And then put some more counters on our elementals. This can gain 5, add a shield counter. There's your Sharn. Okay. And then shield counter on on math is fine. Okay, I think we might be done here. Eleven cards left. Alright, fine. I guess we can play one more Titan. Just to make sure in case they have any shenanigans here. Shield counter Rhino. We're running out of lands now. Okay, move to combats. Play fetch lands, couple more Omnath triggers. So now if they block one of our seven powered creatures, they should still take lethal 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Huh, I guess we're still too short, but Ugin can deal three to their face or just kill the veteran. And that should do it. So it might seem like BM here, but we actually needed to play a few more spells to ensure lethal. No settled wreckage to worry about. Seven cards left in our deck. But uh, pretty far ahead on board, I would say. Uh -huh, opponent did have a march, after all. Okay, so if I Growth Spiral, we can put additional lands in play, 12, and then maybe we still have Lethal here. So we'll try that. So we add a counter to the one they're not targeting. Five cards left, so right now they would take 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, so we need to spiral again. Okay, so that gets exiled, and our opponent still takes 18. So your opponent had the march after all, which we kind of suspected turn 2, and uh, turned out to be right. But thanks to some instant speed growth spirals, we still got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Got our early ramp cards, and then a titan to help us stabilize. So we can start by fetching an island, and then maybe keep Fabled Passage to enable landfall twice once we have a Lotus Cobra in play. There's also a scenario where we don't play anything turn 2, just so we can play Cobra and Grow Spiral in the same turn, in case of any removal. 
Although turn one island does not make me think that the opponent is necessarily holding removal. So I'll run out the Cobra here. Portable hole exiles Cobra, it's too bad. Alright, well, let's just grow spiral now then. Fetch up a planes for your Sharn. Which does mean your Sharn won't have a planes to search up now. Risen Reef resolves. I really need some lanes. Opponent must have drawn the Jewelry Disruption as they didn't counter Risen Reef. Play another, I guess. There's our land at long last. Don't think it's worth it to attack in case of a Wandering Emperor. I want to keep my Risen Reef in play. Opponent passes. And sure, we can Risen Reef again, I suppose. Accumulate some card advantage. But we can't seem to hit any land drops. Don't think Dryad's going to be very helpful given our lack of lands. And there's a Wandering Emperor, as we suspected. Not overconfident. You're just underwhelming. So Dryad can go alongside maybe one Titan. Take three. Okay, so Yasharn will trigger Risen Reef a few times and guarantee at least a forest, so we can start there. There's our land drops. And then I could play Cobra, although it feels like a Sweeper might be imminent. So I'll just hang on to Gross Spiral instead. Right, Fateful Absence, so maybe no Sweepers after all. They probably would have pulled the trigger on a Sweeper to get rid of Risen Reef if they had one, I guess. Do need some more red mana to cast Ultimatum, I think. Although we have a Fable Passage we can activate still. Opponent Cycle Sensor. Alrighty. Is it time for one more Risen Reef? Or do we want to Genesis Ultimatum here? I guess we can Risen Reef first. Kind of a must counter as well, in a way. And then we could also go for an Omnath if we want. Still have a Fabled Passage to activate, so we're pretty likely to get our mana back. Opponent finally pulls the trigger on Absorb. Fair enough. Yeah, we'll pass and then... Uh, can sacrifice a clue in a turn. Another portable hole. It's not going to accomplish much. I 
and at the ferry. Opponent may be afraid of a counter spell, wanted to tap us out. Okay, well, might be time for one of our big plays. Take five. So we can play a pair of Cobras, which will essentially pay for themselves. And then... What's next? Do we want to play a Titan? Maybe start by playing a land. Could also go for Ultimatum, although that they're maybe more likely to counter with like a Negates or Dovin's Veto. Whereas a Titan is a little bit harder for them to counter as a creature. And it will still trigger Risen Reef a bunch, so likely to give us a bunch of mana back with double Lotus Cobra in play. And then... I guess we can also blow up their artifacts. And then shield counter to protect from a sweeper. Get our Cobra back. Alright, so we're getting a nice mana boost. And shield counter on Titan. Kind of tempted to just play another Titan with four Risen Reefs in play. And then we can gain five plus shield counter as I kind of suspect the sweeper is imminent. So the Rhino is not too helpful. Keep putting lands in play with all the Cobras making mana. And shield counter on Titan. And then now we could try a Genesis Ultimatum and maybe have it countered. Or we can try Omnath first and maybe trigger Risen Reef a few more times. And then we can also take out their Planeswalker with it, take out the Fairy. All right, starting to run low on cards and library here. Which is maybe what the opponent is counting on. And uh, I guess we can start pumping Risen Reef. Okay. So 10 cards remaining, to ferry down. How much mana are we working with here? 8, 15, 16, 17. So we can resolve two of our heavy hitters. So we can maybe get one Ugin countered and still have another one. Do we see a Dovin's Veto? We don't. So we can minus zero just to get rid of the tokens. Don't think I need to commit anything else to the board. And then we can attack. That seems okay, or I can play like an Omnath here. Although that's kind of scary with all the Reeves. So... I guess we'll send one at Emperor. Rest can go face. We've got two Titans with shield counters on them. So even as if a sweeper were to happen, should be able to keep these alive unless a sweeper 
is a farewell to exile them. Right, it's going to be a Shark Typhoon for zero, just to draw. Okay. Could have also potentially declined some of the Risen Reef triggers to keep Fabled Passage in hand. It's going to be a Depopulate to wipe the board. Sure. So I still have double Titan standing. And those can attack. And then Ugin can maybe finish them off. Alright. So interesting game here against blue-white control. After being stuck on lands early, but eventually we got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand needs a little bit of help. A few too many expensive cards and... Even with this mana, we won't be able to play Omnath turn 3, even with the Cobra in play. So let's take a mulligan. Okay, this could work. And then I could probably get rid of a land as Yasharn can find a few more. And Headquarters can go. Even though I guess we can put it in play tapped with Growth Spiral, so maybe it's better than a Breeding Pool. Opponent in the meantime on a Yurion deck. Looks red white so far. And Cobra's an interesting draw. I think we still prefer Growth Spiral here to ensure Yasharn next turn. So play this and pass. Opponent, yeah, still appears red-white, so not sure if they're playing a third color they're missing. Could also be some sort of Transmogrify deck, perhaps. Okay, so I can play Lotus Cobra, play a land, play Risen Reef now. That seems tempting. And then we'll get an extra blue source for Ultimatum. And there's ultimatum. All right. Hope to dodge a sweeper here. Falcon Awakening does point towards a combo deck. So yeah, this could be transmogrify and try and cheat a big creature into play. For now, a fable, another card that makes a creature but isn't actually a creature. And so let's see here with fabled passage. Five, six, yeah, seven mana. We should be able to ultimate him. So plenty of blue. Let's make some more reds. And then an extra blue source should be fine. So we have double blue, triple blue. Make another green, perhaps. Ultimate him. And yeah, we found some goodies. Bunch of triggers on the stack. And this can take out an enchantment. And probably shield counter to protect from a sweeper. Blow up the reflection. Put some extra lines in play. Great with Omnath and Lotus Cobra. And shield counter, probably on the titan itself. Okay, can play an extra lands thanks to Dryad. And then, yeah, opponent already concedes. We would have had seven mana at the very least to play another titan if we would like. And uh, it's going to be pretty hard for the opponent to recover from there with an Ugin coming up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and this is a beautiful hand. We're probably going to get run over by an aggro deck. As we see, turn one mountain, but uh, not going to pass upon triple Risen Reef. Too much value. 
Burning tree, yeah, that's a scary start. Double burning tree, anything else? And a bone crusher, all right, could have been worse, I guess. So, what's next? Probably play a green source. An axe with a lot of devotion. Don't really want to chum block with the Risen Reef, but it might be a necessity. Although our opponent might just have an Ember Cleave and take us out in one hit. This kind of looks like that's happening. Alright, well, not much you can do against the Nut Draw. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little heavy on the triomes here, but we'll try it. Another untapped lands could go a long way. And of course, turn to Lotus Cobra to maybe set up an early Omnath. Picked up a Dryad facing another Angel's deck. There's untapped land. So, play this on blue. And then next turn we could already get an Omnath down, and then Dryads helps us enable Omnath as well. Opponent not off to the scariest start, but could see a company next turn. And we'll take one. Okay, so... How about we play a tapped land and Dryad here? Or do we want to go for Omnath? I think we want to save the untapped land for later. And I guess we'll play the Headquarters. Okay, and then next turn we should be able to go off with our Omnath, which can pay for itself. And then Ugin, the cleanup crew, pretty effective in this matchup. There's a company, and they only hit one Valkyrie, still pretty good as our opponent goes to 29, giving the team plus two plus two. Fabled Passage, also an exciting draw. Step on Omnath. Draws a Risen Reef, get that in play as soon as possible. Omnath pays for itself. And uh, let's see here. I guess we can play Breeding Pool. And then we could already play Ugin. What happens if I play Risen Reef? I can still fetch with Fabled Passage. Three, four, five, six. So I don't think Risen Reef would work even if we hit a land. So I should just play it safe and play Ugin here, I think. And then minus three, leaving us with an Omnath and an Uncracked Fabled Passage. And then we'll still have a Risen Reef to follow up. You are too dangerous to roam free. So we'll see how they try and come back. Well, Skyclave, pretty great answer to Omnath. And a Jada. Step one, Risen Reef. And then we can just plus on Jada, and then take the hit from Skyclave, which we can potentially kill next turn. Probably gonna cycle the Triome. I think Jada is scarier than Apparition here. And we'll end up cycling this, can do it now if we want. Okay, so we know we're working with the land. Gonna keep the Fabled Passage uncracked, since we can maybe make use of it with a Lotus Cobra. Okay. Moon Dancer, so now I'm probably fine chumping Skyclave with Risen Reef, and then Ugin can minus three again, as opposed to taking four. And then our opponent will have to rebuild once again. 
Alright. Yeah, Four Point has another collected company here. We could be in trouble. Moon Dancer is fine. And an Overseer. Okay, so we can kill Moon Dancer by plusing Ugin. Or we can kill the Flyer since we have an illusion on the ground. Although Moon Dancer is the scarier of the two creatures. Yeah, Sharn's not bad either. And what's the worst case scenario here? I plus Ugin on Moon Dancer, or opponent plays. Wipe another Righteous Valkyrie, pumping Overseer, and then we can no longer wipe the board with Ugin. So I think we should take out the Flyer. Even though we might not be able to kill Moondancer next turn. Grab one last Forests. But we should still have a Mountain to fetch with Fabled Passage. And then do I attack? Would put the opponent to 28. So it could be helpful if our opponent maybe has another Valkyrie in the future. I think we should attack. But there's a small chance they can grow Moondancer above a 4-4. And our opponent concedes. Ugin's gonna take over from here. So yeah, ended up being kind of close. But yeah, Ugin to the rescue. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Obosh as companion, which often points towards an aggressive red deck. And this hand's not particularly great with a ton of lands entering tapped, so can't even play Cobra on curve. Seems a bit clunky. Alright, this isn't great, but we can try it, bottom and Ugin, and hope to find some more ramp cards. Alright, turn one elves, so maybe this is like a fight rigging deck. As we see the namesake card. Well, if they've got a Regisaur next turn, we could just be dead already. For now, probably lean towards Gross Parallel so we don't expose Cobra to removal. Opponent puts a Bosch in hand, alright, so no big creature to enable fight rigging at least. And an ultimatum's nice. So we can play Cobra. I think I want Pathway on the red. And then we can make green play Gross Parallel. And this on blue is fine. Alright, so that's our turn. Hoping for an untapped land next turn. So we can play our Titan. Or I guess ultimatum. Probably better. It's going to be an Elder Gergroth, which can enable fight rigging. So what else do they have? Another Gergroth. That's only fair. Alrighty, so play this on green, and that should get us ultimatum. If we make a red here. And yeah, could have been better. Although we'll make a bit more mana here, so we can maybe still play something afterwards. So let's see, we're getting five landfall triggers, so enough to play Omnath afterwards. Which can trigger Risen Reef as well. And a Dryad. Okay. Well, next turn we can cast either Ugin or Titan to try and stabilize us a bit better. Obosh comes down, which, yeah, doubles the damage output of Gergroth. So that is a lot of damage. Might want to soak up some damage with Dryad. So this is 28, 
If I block like so, I'm still taking 14 plus 6, 20. And this will still trample for 3, which is essentially 6. So I have to chump one additional card. I guess um, Cobra. And then we're still taking 14 plus 6, 20, down to 1. All right. So we can play Ugin and then essentially wipe the board. Can play Headquarters first to gain some life of Omnath. Don't think we're doing anything else. If I play Titan, that's gonna cost a little bit too much mana, I think. Well, let's see if Ugin can save us here. Minus five. Maybe it would have been worth it to just chump with more stuff. Given that we were unlikely to do anything but wipe the board with Ugin, so might as well do something else. Frog Hemoth probably kills Ugin instead of putting us to one. Although, yeah, going for our life total is not unreasonable. Good thing we have a Titan left over. Although the Frog Hemoth has 6-6 six, six here. Arisen Reef's not bad. Can we play both? I think so. Could have also put the land in hand if that would have helped, but didn't seem necessary. And then we'll gain some life and shield counter. Seems better than a Rhino. Another Titan coming up. This can plus. Okay, well that Obosh was scary, but we may have been able to stabilize, although as I say that another fight rigging comes down. And I'm not sure if our opponent's playing even more expensive cards than Gargroth and Frog Hemoth. Maybe their curve kind of stops at 5. Great Hench, yeah, that's a good one. That's a 9 mana card. So they can still play it, but for Akimath, unlikely to attack into Titan, another Gargroth, however. So our opponent's deck is fully going off as well here. Okay. So... Probably start with Titan, can blow up Great Henge. And uh, then we can likely still play Omnath. Although maybe Omnath first makes more sense, as we can maybe... Enable its landfall along the way. Okay, so Cobra plus lands into Titan should work. And then destroy artifact or enchantments. And so what else? Probably shield counter. Blow up Great Henge. Shield counter on Titan. Ugin can keep plussing. And we'll stay back. Opponent also has a lair. And I guess their own Titan they can also hit with fight rigging. So the game keeps going, just when you thought it was over. But not sure how they're planning to deal with Ugin. I guess an 8-8 Gargroth can trade for a few shield counters here. Or I can block with Titan and Lotus Cobra, which I don't care about too much, and save the shield counter on the other Titan. And not lose any loyalty on Ugin, otherwise I could have just blocked with Titan. Okay, so... Start with Yasharn. Get some basics out of the deck. And Dryad is going to be somewhat helpful too here.
can cycle headquarters. And a Genesis Ultimatum looks mighty fine. Might want to activate Ugin first. Are we interested in using a minus five, perhaps? I don't hate it. And then we might hit another Ugin with Ultimatum, which is why I want to use this first. And we might get a replacement on Math anyway. Although, hmm. Well, I guess I didn't have the right mana for Ultimatum here, since I relied on Dryad, so I should have floated mana for Ultimatum first. Lesson learned. Should still be okay here, but this could have been game over. If our opponent has a Thought Seize, I'll be pretty sad. Just a Lenor Elves. And a Regisaur. And another one, so they were maybe holding out until after Ugin minused. That's fair. Ugin's gonna plus... Can take out Elves or deal 3 to Regisaur. In case we hit another Ugin off Ultimatum. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable enough. Alright, just a Titan. And a couple more ultimatums, I guess, are nice too. Make Rhino, shield counters. And... Can I maybe cast ultimatum if I fetch with Fabled Passage? We should have an island left. And then I think we would have had the mana too, so... Yeah, the game looked pretty over, so... Close one here against a bush. Opponent got us all the way to one. And even a few missequences didn't cost us the game. Alright, we get to see our Elementals deck in action, and once it gets the ball rolling, it does some incredibly busted things, but of course is still susceptible to aggro decks killing it before it can set up. It does have not that many early ramp cards, so you do need to have an opening hand with enough of them. If the opponent has some cheap interaction, they can potentially mess you up as well and leave you stranded with a bunch of expensive cards that you cannot cast. So not a perfect deck, but if you're looking for some incredibly over-the-top plays, then this might be the deck for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.